Welcome to episode three of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the FCBL, presented by ChangeUp. I'm Matt Satilli, and I am joined alongside my co-host and good friend, Owen Shadrick. Owen, how you doing today? I'm hanging in, Matt. Quarantine is getting longer and longer, but we're, we're doing okay. We've had a couple of good interviews so far, and I'm excited for this third one. Yeah, we're really excited to have on Nick Sinicola from the Brockton Rocks. He talks about his experience last summer and getting ready for ball this year. Before we get into that, we wanted to give you guys a quick update on how things are looking here over at the league office. We're doing everything we can to take the proper precautions to make sure our players are safe this summer. We're working with the Board of Health as well as the mayors in the towns where teams play. So we want to make sure, once again, that we do everything we can to make sure player safety is our top priority. But we are really hoping, as all of you listening are, that we will play baseball this summer. So fingers crossed that everything goes according to plan. We'll be sure to update you guys with the most current information we have. Uh, but in the meantime, we have a great interview with Nick Sinicola of the Brockton Rocks. So let's get into that interview. Here is Nick Sinicola. All season, it is Nick Sinicola from the Brockton Rocks. Nick, welcome on, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on, guys. So uh, it's been over two months since quarantine and since the outbreak of coronavirus. Uh, what's your current quarantine setup looking like? Uh, just staying at home, you know, trying to go out and throwing as much as I can. Uh, got a teammate who lives in Swansea, so we try to meet up and throw as much as we can. But really, outside of that, not really doing much. Just trying to stay in shape and stuff. So, And on that note, how has your training regimen been compared to during the season? Has it been a little hard to adjust to the new circumstances or do you find yourself kind of getting in a groove at this point? Uh, you know, at the beginning, it was definitely a lot more difficult to, uh, to get used to, you know, going from lifts and having practice and stuff to, to stay on top of everything. You know, now we kind of have to do everything on our own and um, find ways to, to get things done. So I've been trying to run a little bit more and, do some body weight stuff and obviously you're still throwing and stuff doing bands. So we just talked to Angelo Baez, the brave hearts, and he said he developed uh, some magic skills. Have you developed any new skills or hobbies <laughs> while you were in, no. while you in quarantine? <laughs> I haven't done anything now, <laughs> just school and school finished. So a little bit more video games and stuff. Um, you know, just trying to go out play some cornhole with my family a little bit here and there too. So just trying to stay a little bit more busy, but I haven't, haven't added anything like that now. There you go. Massachusetts still a little quiet at this point. Yeah, you know, a lot, uh, a lot less going on. So we just started to open up this week. So hopefully, uh, things continue to progress in, in those terms. But and uh, how did it feel when you first found out that the season was going to be ending? If you can just kind of walk us through how you found out and your mindset as you guys were entering the heart of the season, you know, a lot of teams feel like they start to hit that stride a couple months in and, yeah. you know, where did you feel like you were at in terms of your progress this season? You know, I think that we had a lot of growth going on right around that time. You know, I think that we had a really, we did a really good job this year of building a great team atmosphere. So um, from the leaders, they, they helped set that precedent. And then right as we had just started winning, some games of playing some really, really good games that we were feeling comfortable with and were something that we wanted to build off of. It kind of hit. So we were on our way down to UMBC. So we were originally going to fly down and then um, obviously everything started happening. So now we're going to take a bus and we got about an hour and a half into the ride maybe. And uh, we got a call telling us to turn around and stuff. So we came back. And at that point we didn't even know that it was going to be canceled we just thought that maybe UMBC was going to cancel this weekend just to kind of see what was going on and stuff. Um, and then we got back and college world series got canceled and then everything canceled after that. So, but we were feeling really, really good and confident with, with how we were playing around that time. And we were looking forward to getting into conference play, but you know, uh, but it must be exciting to have the prospect of looking forward to some live ball this summer with Brockton. And uh, on that note, what went into your decision to return to the Rocks? What was that conversation like? Did you reach out to them? Were you contacted? And, you know, why? You know, I, I was going to go into the uh, NECBL this summer, and then obviously they canceled. And my coach called me about a week or so after that, 
asked me what I wanted to do if I wanted to go back to Brockton. I had a great summer last year with them. I thought it was really fun, really fun baseball. Um, it's a good mix of high competition and a little bit of having it laid back a little bit more too, where it's you just kind of going out and playing and having a good time too. So um, definitely something I wanted to to go back to and play again because it was such a fun summer baseball wise. So um, it was kind of an easy decision to to want to go back, um, and I'm excited obviously for uh, for the season to start. Last season, your stats spoke for your for themselves. You were two and zero in nine starts, and you were your team was ten and two in those starts. You had a two point six six ERA, seventy one strikeouts, and you were named one of the two pro top pro prospects for the twenty nineteen season. What did that mean to you to be named one of those top prospects? And how did you feel coming out of last season? Um, you know, last season I really wanted to learn how to to build stuff for myself a little bit more. So I had learned a lot of stuff at school, a little bit, obviously with a lot of some of the competition we were playing with Florida State and stuff like that, we were playing really, really, really good teams. So it's a little bit harder to get into a groove a little bit more. You know, you kind of get some setbacks, but when I got into summer ball last year, I kind of wanted to find stuff for myself a little bit more. So I was changing some stuff up a little bit, trying to be a little bit more aggressive in the zone or um, throwing a pitch maybe I wouldn't have thrown, maybe like a slider and a fastball count or something like that. So that was really stuff I wanted to focus on. Um, in terms of winning the, the award, it was really just wanted to go out and play. And, uh, you know, it's cool to get recognized sometimes, but it's really just all about going out and playing. And um, at the end of the day, I would have rather have won, won, won the whole thing. But Yeah, you also had an awesome accomplishment. You were named one of the starters for the All-Star game last summer. And not only that, but you had a great inning of work and you recorded a strikeout. What was that experience like? That was super cool. That park is so – it's so historic. It's super fun to play there. Um, So many fans there. It was really, really awesome to to be a part of watching the Home Run Derby. Just guys hitting the ball 400 feet was super fun. You know, that whole experience was incredible to, to be a part of. So I'm grateful that. I was able to uh, get invited to that. And, and then Andy was named manager and he came up to me on the bus right up and was like, you want to start? I said, absolutely. And it was super fun experience. So, Before we get back to our interview with Nick Sinicola, we wanted to share a message from one of our sponsors, ChangeUp. We're excited to announce a brand new partnership this season with ChangeUp, a cutting edge player centric pitch tracking solution, promoting health and safety, allowing coaches to capture and analyze a proprietary set of performance analytics and helping pitchers maximize their potentials. Coming to baseball programs around the world this year, ChangeUp eliminates the administrative overhead associated with adhering to pitch count regulations, allowing coaches to focus on baseball. Coaches and parents at all levels, Little League, AAU, high school, and the collegiate level take notice. ChangeUp is the clear choice to ensure your pitchers aren't being thrown too much or too often and are getting proper rest. Together, we can make this great game even better by protecting arms and ensuring compliance with pitching guidelines. For more information, visit ChangeUp's website, www.changeup.io. That's www.change-up.io. ChangeUp. Every pitch counts. Now, back to our interview with Nick Sinicola. So, obviously, you played for UMaine, and you had a role as a pitcher out of the bullpen, but then you transitioned into the Friday start of the season. How was that transition for you? Um, you know, I've always been a starter, so I think that the transition from being a starter to a pen guy was a little bit more difficult for me, and then going back was something that, you know, I definitely wanted to do. I enjoy starting. I find it, you know, a lot more fun to be a part of, you know, an entire game, you know, instead of just coming in and pitching an inning or two innings. You know, even though you have a lot more opportunities to come in those games and make a difference in more games, I would rather come in and try to do what I can for that one game and put my team in the best position to win. So um, I definitely enjoy starting better. And that summer ball last year in Brockton was really where it kind of clicked for me, where I think I could do it. And um, I came back on campus in the fall and Coach Jerber was all about me wanting to start. And uh, from there, we just kind of built up to me being able to become a starter this year. So, So going off of that, moving as a starter, traditionally to the bullpen now back to a starter and now as you were expecting to be in the heart of your season you're dealing with a two three month hiatus how do you feel like you're going to adjust when you come back in terms of load management and just making sure you're in a comfortable position to return to live action uh you know i think that we're going to take it 
definitely slower. We're not going to try to rush into anything. Um, at the end of the day, summer ball is mostly about getting better and staying healthy. So um, the main focus uh, last year was from Andy did a great job of controlling innings and stuff like that. So um, I think that we're going to try to control innings again this year and uh, try to spread the wealth in terms of innings and, and uh, how often you're throwing. But I'm trying to build up so I can be 100% where I can, you know, go out and throw five, six innings, which – I don't see happening that much, but if I could, you know, I, I want to be able to have that in the tank. So. Yeah, for sure. And to go back to your season at Maine this year, you finished as the strikeout leader in America East and you had an eight strikeout performance against Villanova back on February 22nd. Uh, we were talking about your strikeout to walk ratio, which was really impressive. I believe it was 72 to 21, something along those lines uh, last summer. How do you view your control on the mound and what helps you attack hitters and really just focus on keeping it in the strike zone? You know, I'm a big uh, tempo pitcher, so I want to I wanna be very aggressive on the mound. So I get the ball and I'm trying to go right back on the mound and go, go, go. And, um, you know, I think that just as I stay in that tempo, the more comfortable I'm getting, the more strikes I can throw. And obviously fatigue sets in. And, you know, I, there's some innings where this year I was – I struck out the first two guys on like six, seven pitches – and then a walk two, and then two runs would score on a hit. So it's just fatigue sets in a little bit more, and, and sometimes mental fatigue sets in. So I think that really it's you have to stay locked in for every pitch. And if I can do that and just stay on top of myself a lot more, um, I think that's where my control really uh, shows how well it, I can control the ball. So We talked to Sean Lawler, the 2019 FCBL MVP, last year and he announced that he will be finishing up his final year of eligibility at UMaine playing for you guys. What's it like knowing that you'll have that big addition and big bat in your lineup? Uh, it's fantastic. You know, he's, he's a great player. Uh, watched him at the all-star game too, played against him. So we know how good he is. We know how good of a, of a player he can be for us. Um, especially with a lot of turnover and change of, of people coming in and out of, of the team. Um, He's definitely a bright spot, so something that we're looking forward to having on the team because he's a fantastic player. Speaking of bright spots on teams in the FCBL, uh, you guys are returning a good number of players from last year's roster, and as you mentioned, you guys are looking to make that next step. What do you think this team has to do, and what does that mean to have some core pieces returning to hopefully make a deep playoff run this season? You know, I think we just need to stay focused, and I think that the whole league this year is going to be extremely competitive. I think last year was a little bit bitter how we finished because we had such a great regular season and it kind of got, we didn't finish the way we wanted to, but um, I think that the league's going to be extremely competitive this year just because no one's really been playing. And I think that last year, really, once you get down towards the end of the summer, people are very tired and stuff, you know, we've been playing for six and seven months on end. Uh, and, you know, this year we've had a, big, a long break in the middle. So I think people are going to, want to get out and play and be very aggressive and, and competitive. So I think it's going to be a great year for, for everybody. I think that everyone's going to be super competitive. How do you feel like the new playoff format is going to affect preparation with the team in the first half and then the team in the second half, both clinching top seeds, which would be a change from last year where it was just the top six make the playoffs in that order? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be uh, make this season a lot more competitive down the stretch. Um, but for the team who clinches at first, I think it's going to be, you know, you have a good chance to find some new adjustments that you can make, you know, find some more, some more guys you can use them in different roles and stuff. Cause you already have a little bit more of a comfort level in terms of uh, where you are for the playoffs. So I think that they're going to be able to play around a little bit, experiment more, you know, use different guys in different roles that maybe they weren't, maybe they were closing earlier and you want to try starting them. Um, and you can find new things like that. So I think that it's going to be great in terms of distributing the wealth again and managing innings and all that kind of stuff. So, and as you return to the FCBL this season, you you'll be assuming the role of a veteran who's gone through the motions before. What advice and guidance do you hope to show the freshmen and the new players this summer? And did you have any role models from last season that did that for you? Uh, last year, I feel like we all just kind of uh, showed up and wanted to win. You know, uh, George was one of my my one of my closest friends on the team last year and he had played there before. Um, and he kind of like made it a lot easier to, to come in and just kind of showed, you know, this is a little bit more laid back than, than what you might expect. But at the end of the day, we all still want to win. And I think that that's kind of the precedent that I want to try to set for the team next year. Um, 
you know, just at the end of the day, we all want to win. I think that that's really something that's just going to come naturally this year, again, with the long break and stuff. So I think everyone's going to be competitive. Uh, what is it like to play for Brockton in front of that fan base? And any message to the fans who might be listening who are craving baseball and are looking forward to seeing the team back in action this summer? Brockton's such a fun place to play. Um, I think that we broke the record last year for for attendance, and that was super cool to play in front of all those people. Um, and we also have, like, super loyal fans who show up every game, so that's super fun. Um, hopefully that they can come to the game this year, and I hope that they, I can see them out there and, and hear them rooting for us. So, Yeah, we're all rooting for things to return to a sense of normalcy real soon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're now going to move on to our final segment. It is called Quick Hits, and it is presented by Zephyr, the official on-field hat of the Futures League. Zephyr, high quality and innovative designs since 1993. So, Nick, we wanted to ask a couple more questions for our audience. This has been awesome so far, but we want to we dig a little deeper. We want to try to get to know you and uh, just kind of throw a couple questions your way. So who's been your favorite teammate that you played with in the FCBL? Uh, Connor Lynchy, actually, last year. Played with him. He was a reliever for us. We kind of just hit it off right off the bat. So, um, But really it was him, George, and Matt Swanson where all four of us were kind of like always together in the, in the bullpen and stuff. So um, super fun. But me, George, and uh, Connor – together all like super funky pitchers you know we all kind of do some weird stuff weird mechanics and like weird uh not like typical mindsets that you find so I think that funk kind of finds funk and you kind of stay together yeah and uh for those people who are listening at home who might not know who George is can you uh just share his last name just how you guys met that relationship yeah together uh George Goldstein super fun you know I walked in the first day and he's he was one of the vets opened up to everyone and was very talkative, super welcoming to everyone. So um, really was just walked in, and kind of just hit it off, started talking right away. And then me and Connor became throwing partners and, and uh, Matt was just a dude on the mound. So uh, we all kind of just hit it off and uh, got pretty close. We were actually, we were scouring the Brockton Twitter the other day and we found the video of George Goldstein's windup or pre-pitch ritual. You want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, just um, super, I don't even know how to describe it, honestly, but um, wiping his hat and, and uh, something that I think he, I've talked to him about it before and it was, um, he's been on foul pole a couple of times with it too. Um, but really he's just, I think he said it's something that, kind of gives him something to do between going out onto the field and um, when he's actually pitching and helps him get into that mindset a little bit more. Um, but super fun to watch, really kind of just gets everyone going every time and uh, obviously gets himself going too because he's, he's a great pitcher too. So, Will he dedicate any time in practice to working on that or is it just as soon as he hits the diamond in play, it's, it's set and it's perfected? No, it's, it comes natural to him. He doesn't have to practice that at all. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what's your favorite opposing ballpark to play at in the league? Oof, maybe Nashville. I think you know. I think I pitched very well there. Um, I just like the mound. I like the field and the high wall in right. Kind of makes me pretty comfortable to play there as well. So, um, but they have a super cool fan base too, and they're they're kind of hard on you. So it's kind of fun to give it back to them too when you're when you're playing well. So, do you feel like you excel a little more when you have that? banter with the fans or at least you feel like you have to lock in more do you feel like you might be comfortable like how do you feel like that adjustment might be if you're not playing in front of fans this summer uh you know I don't think it really makes a huge difference um I think that really basically everyone just kind of gets himself going and kind of motivates himself but a little bit extra motivation doesn't hurt at all so proving people wrong is never never a bad thing never hurts either so in Nashua does that cowbell ever get in your head it gets a little annoying, really, on the bench, but on the mound, you don't really hear it that much. Probably shouldn't have asked that because that's just fuel to the fire. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to hear it a lot more now if there are fans. What is your intro music that you like to come out to, whether it be from last summer or if there's a song that you've been toying with of bringing out for this season? Uh, last year, I did Overdue by Metro Boomin and Travis Scott. Really just kind of song that I found that no one really had heard of really before that. Um, all Heroes Wear Just, Capes. It's a great album. Yes. Yeah, it is. Um, 
so I really enjoyed it. I thought it was it was super cool, kind of like a low key kind of beat to to come out to. I didn't really get to think about it that much this year, because um, you know, in Maine we don't really get to play home games until halfway through into April, really. So, um, but this summer I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to think of something, but uh, I'll probably stay with Travis Scott or something like that. So. Okay, so if any fans have any recommendations, they can shoot them your way? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I love it. Uh, who's your favorite big league team? Sox, 100%. Love it. <laughs> and, uh, our first two guests have both gone Yankees, and Owen and I are both Sox fans. So <laughs> glad to see you. Go uh, Sox. Uh, who's your favorite player in the big leagues? My favorite player, man. I mean, you have to have Trout in the conversation. He's just so entertaining to watch. I feel like as a pitcher, I kind of have to have a pitcher, though. I think Verlander is super fun to watch and Scherzer. Um, Scherzer more so, in my opinion, just because he's so crazy on the mound and, and wants to just wants to win so bad. I find that super interesting to follow. So um, he has crazy stuff. He's super fun to watch. So You were talking earlier about tempo and, like, kind of shoving it to the hitters, and that's what Verlander and Scherzer do a lot, so that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can't watch guys like Price. They take way too long. <laughs> Well, I guess for better or worse, he's not going to be on the sock, so we won't be watching that many yeah. this year. But Hopefully Mookie is, though. We will see. We will see how that situation <laughs> plays out. Nick, how about any baseball nicknames that you got from years past years of playing or in the FCBL specifically? Uh, really, it's the only one I've ever gotten is Cinna. Uh, I got that in high school. It kind of just stuck with me. Um, I don't really think it happened that much in uh, – for the Rocks last year, I don't think many people called me that. Um, but at school, people call me that. Um, and everyone here still calls me that, too. So that's really the only one I've got, though. Nice. Any superstitions you're willing to talk about on the podcast? Um, well, I have really bad ankles. So I have, like, a long process of putting on um, my ankle braces and stuff. But when I get out of the shower, I put on left sock, right sock, and then – right brace left brace left shoe right shoe I do that every time and then I always eat subway the night before I pitch the next question was actually about your favorite post-game meals that was your favorite pre-game meal what's your favorite yeah. post-game meal post-game probably pizza pizza's just probably my favorite food in general so I can eat that whenever that's been a popular answer any <laughs> specific kind of pizza pepperoni always pepperoni there you go what's your go-to order at subway well, we're on that topic. Subway, I get pepperoni, cheese, and uh, lettuce toasted. So okay. super, super random order, but. Big pepperoni uh, guy, though. It doesn't matter. Huge if it's pepperoni. Hot. Always uh, pepperoni. Uh, Makes me sweat a little bit. The, the pepperoni at Subway is kind of hot, but I, I love it. And then day games or night games, what's your preference? Man, I think I like day games a little more. Just a little bit easier all around, you know, seeing signs and stuff. And no one's going to really – get caught up in a pop-up that you can't see of the lights or something but I think night games are super cool um but I would prefer day games for myself I kind of like pitching and where I can sweat too and finally bubble gum or sunflower seeds probably sunflower seeds because when I chew gum I'd rather go mint um but I, I love them both so but probably sunflower seeds what brand or flavor for sunflower seeds original David original always nice Keep it simple. Awesome. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been an awesome interview. And best of luck with everything. We hope to see you on the diamond real soon this summer. Thanks for having me, guys. Stay thank safe. You. Absolutely. You too. This has been episode three of Back to the Futures, the official podcast of the FCBL. New episodes coming out every Monday and Thursday. We'll see you later. Oh, 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 oh,